second part of this keynote will come from Axel Kushivatsky, who is the head of international, international film productions at Telefonica Studios, and is also a screenwriter and a TV producer. Since launching a year ago, Telefonica Studios has invested in nearly 30 movies. One of them is Regression, an elevated genre movie with Emma Watson and Ethan Hunk. Um, it's directed from Alejandro Amenabar, uh, who previously directed The Others. And Axel has also produced a number of English language, uh, English, Spanish language hits such as Wild Tales, which world premiered here in competition at the Cannes Film Festival. So Axel will be, will be joining us to discuss the studio strategy and we'll take a look at what Telefonica Studios is bringing onto the market. Hello, Axel. Hello. Very nice to see you. Nice to be here. Uh, thank you, Mom. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, I have good friends over there, so... Oh, good. Yeah. Yes. Um, so we actually saw very little of regression. I mean, why is oh, that, that's, such a that was on purpose, actually. What? That was on purpose. Okay. We don't want to show why? anything yet. I mean, it's it's uh, one of our biggest projects for next year. Uh, mm -hmm. As you told everybody before, the, the movie is directed by Alejandro Menaber, which is, I would say, one of the best Spanish filmmakers ever. Mm -hmm. And uh, the movie is uh, starring by you know Emma Watson, Ethan Hawke, David Tullis. It's a huge movie for us, mm -hmm. and I think uh, it can start a trend. The kind of uh, big, at least for us, movies we want to, to uh, shoot in English. Yes, I mean, what's interesting about this uh, project is that it's uh, English language directed... Yeah, um, by a Spaniard. Yeah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> by a Spanish director, and it's, you know, high profile with, you know, uh, uh, high, you know, upscale talent. Yeah. I just, how does it reflect your strategy at Telefonica Studio? Is it what you're trying well, to uh, do, like uh, kind uh, of mix? Yeah, it, local, you know, I, I do believe in, uh, in, in uh, keep some kind of balance between local stuff and uh, international production. Yeah. It has a lot to do with uh, the, the landscape where we are making movies. The thing is, uh, Telefonica, owns cable services, uh, pay TV services, uh, ne free to air networks uh, in uh, some countries, and there are some uh, low obligations to fulfill in some of those, those countries. Mm -hmm. When we did realize that we were making around 12 to 15 movies a year between those you know, the different uh, companies, it was pretty much clear that we were making the same amount of movies that uh, companies like Paramount or Sony were making. Mm -hmm. So that's when uh, my boss said, mm, we should do something about this, and we created mm -hmm. Telefonica Studios. We are producing in Argentina through Telefe, which is uh, the uh, running success. It's the biggest TV network there, and we are we are using the the law obligation that comes for Telefonica after owning, you know, uh, Movistar TV, which is uh, a big pay TV, you know, player there. Mm -hmm. So since we are aiming for local audiences, we were trying to also aim for global. Mm -hmm. And it has a lot to do with uh, brand strategy, you know, you, you have to, uh, you know, we don't have like five years to create a brand, not anymore. So the, the rational thing to do was to have local successes and also international stuff coming up. And that's why we aggressively pursue Alejandro Amenabar and Fernando Bovaira, which is his producer. Mm -hmm. But you're here today uh, doing this keynote on film and TV crossroads because uh, Telefonica recently acquired Canal Plus Spain. Uh, we are still awaiting for the government approval. Okay, but still, you know, you're going to be looking into scripted original. Well, I guess that uh, some, you know, it's impossible to, to know exactly which effect the merge will have. But it's obvious that if it happens, it's going to have a huge effect in the you know, audiovisual Spanish landscape. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we assume that it's going to happen, but we, you know, you know it's, it's not in our, in our hands. Mm -hmm. But it will be the next chapter for Telefonica Studios now that you've oh, yeah. already invested in nearly 30 movies in a year and a half. Well, we, you know, uh, yeah, uh, uh, a year ago we presented you know, the, the project in the San Sebastian Film Festival. And we said, you know, our, our main goal is to achieve around 25 movies in three years. And we reached 30 movies in a year and, you know, year and two months. So much so, content. How do yeah, you... I'm so tired. You know, my wife and my kids are <laughs> cursing me every time I run away from home. Should but, I say so? Run away? Okay. 
But going back to TV series, um, what type of TV drama are you interested in, in doing at Telefonica Well, you Studios? see, it's, uh, I'm part of the audience. Mm -hmm. So I, I consume everything that is, you know, making the rounds from BBC staff to Lionsgate or uh, when, when we are talking about, we are talking about platforms. So the serialized narrative form that it's developing in, you know, in, in pay television it's, and, and VOD services, mm -hmm. it's completely different than the kind of stuff that you know, broadcast television have been making for the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. You see, it's serialized. It's, and the talent that, that, that is approaching you know, serialized storytelling, it's the talent that like 20 years ago were making in, you know, indie movies. It seems to be the new indie movie, you know, uh, yes, movement course. somehow. Yes. Yeah, because you have uh, it, supposedly you have some new freedom that you will not find mm -hmm. in network stuff. And I, I think, uh, you know, I heard some people saying that uh, Windows will collapse, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure about that. I think Windows will coexist, but the, the truth is, the driver is still content, good content. I mean, not every content, good content. So, in in order to, I mean. You're going to watch a, a series like you are reading a book. Every single episode, it, it will be like a chapter in a book. Yes. It, it's really serialized. It's like getting back to the old Charles Dickens way of publishing. You know, it's like you, have, you did have like a, you know, a chapter every, every week. Uh, so the, the viewing experience is going to be completely different than theatrical. Mm -hmm. So you have to, uh, and even different than broadcast television. So you have to create content that works within that frame. Okay, but uh, in terms of directors, I mean, you obviously have great uh, connections with directors. Uh, Damien Sifon, who directed Wild Tales, Alejandro yeah. Amenabar uh, from Regression. Uh, are they willing to go into TV series? I mean, I know a lot in of Europe, those guys the did, US, did come already. from television. You know, uh, Damien uh, created uh, Los Simuladores, mm -hmm. which uh, it's a cold series in a lot of countries. Uh, Juan Campanella came from, from TV, actually. He's, actually, he's now directing a, a pilot. Uh, so uh, I don't see, you know, I think that uh, talking about this but kind of good Alejandro fight, Amenabar, uh, he doesn't say. want to do TV. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way to convince Alejandro. Yeah, there's no way. But okay, some, all the some other guys are. like uh, Pablo Larraín from Chile, mm -hmm. and he's, he's such a great director. He's, he has been make, making shows for HBO Latam. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like, I think that this discussion about, you know, the, the, the opposition between movies and television is kind of old fashioned. We're talking of about course. content. Yeah, and it's yeah. not about. Mm -hmm. Anything else? So you're you're already pitching them stuff. Uh, we are uh, doing some stuff. Yeah. The, Let's see what happens. Okay. And are you maybe interested in like adapting some of the movies that you're making at Telefonica Studios into TV series? Are there some? Well, we will like, we will love to. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes you know the, some stuff doesn't translate. And I've seen there's a trend in the U.S. trying to you know create sh shows out of well, you know uh, proved. Material and I don't think that works. You know, we were talking. You were talking about Mad Men. Mm -hmm. That's a show that there's no, there's nothing like, there, there has been nothing like that before. Mm -hmm. It's unique. Let's talk about Breaking Bad. There is nothing like that. Nothing before was like Breaking Bad. And by the way, uh, the, the Breaking Bad was produced by Mark Johnson, which is one of the greatest film producers from the last 20 years. This is the, he's the guy who uh, did win an, uh, an Academy Award for uh, Rain Man. Yes, of course. So there's no boundaries mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. But you say that San Sebastian, no that there's going to be a saturation of you know, content very soon. Do you think what that you? you're... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm curious about this. You know, uh, everything about, uh, about series seems to be a brand thing. So there are too many shows out there? Well, there are too many shows out there. There are too many shows out there. And, mm -hmm. and I know that everybody's trying to get a show you know, kind of tailor-made for their services. But I'm curious if, in, in, if we, so how many of those shows will survive after mm -hmm. the next two or three years. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But not you're sure. getting into that business. Oh, yeah, though. of course. <laughs> like everybody else. <laughs> so so but you, but yeah, but you those have shows, different type of... Well, we, we, need, we, we need to create uh, some, st uh, listen, we need to become relevant. In mm -hmm. order to, get, to, to be relevant. That was the plan with Telefonica Studios. Yeah, that, really was, that was the plan. To, to, to become be, really to global. That and also to create new exclusive windows for our services. Mm -hmm. Both. To give, you know, add, add value to the services. So we are, we are creating some new forms 
of uh, I wouldn't say entertainment, but listen, uh, we have we have a movie which is on general release today uh, in Spain. I'm, I'm not going to tell you which one, and we are. No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, and we are going to have uh, on our DVD, VOD system in Spain the director's cut. Interesting. You haven't seen that on, on VOD services. And it's not a brilliant idea, but it's something different. Mm -hmm. So you're creating exclusive content for your other outlets? We're trying to, yeah. yeah. Okay. Also, since we are, uh, we're working between the boundaries of the law obligation and tax breaks. So tell us about that, the law obligation. You have in Telefe has a law obligation of making eight movies a year in Argentina, being mm -hmm. co-producers, equity partners. And in Spain, you have a law obligation of reinvesting 5% of your net income of, Telefo of uh, Movistar TV net income in new product. Mm -hmm. So that, that makes a lot of money, actually. Yeah, but how is the recession in Spain, how is the economic situation impacting uh, your business? Well, <laughs> we can't be dependent on, uh, on the, you know, admissions. We have to find ways to, you know, finance the movies, mm -hmm. you know, taking uh, admission sales out of the question. Yeah, yeah that's what, that what's happened when you have a crisis scenario. But at the same time, uh, the law obligations is still the same, no matter if you're in the middle of a crisis. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm from Argentina, you know, I have a master in crisis. <laughs> Those are my friends. Yeah. <laughs> but you're also relying a lot on soft money to finance the shows. We right? are co-producing, and we have a, we are using every single tax rebate, you know, government funding, everything we can we can find to to get our movies and I hope TV shows made. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us, for example, regression? How was? Oh, uh, regression is a co-production between Spain and Canada. Mm -hmm. So the, it has uh, the benefits of Spain and Canada. Mm -hmm. Where did the soft money come from uh, uh, on regression, for example? Uh, well, the movie was actually was pre-sold. Okay. And, uh, yeah, the Weinstein company has the movie for the US, and Sony has the movie for Latin America. So it was really easy to put the, the, that movie together. It wasn't so hard, because you have Alejandro mm -hmm. getting back to the thriller genre, and yes. it's an amazing script. It, it can, but you cannot tell it us what It will scare the days out of you. <laughs> It will scare. It's, it's an amazing movie. This is the guy who created The Others, one of the greatest you know, so we're thrillers about ever. Yeah. yeah. Also, uh, you, know, the, the, you know, the casting was locked in, so you have Emma Watson, you have Ethan Hawke, and you have David Tullis. So everything came together really fast. It was, it was really easy. But it's kind of amazing the way that you are able to get those type of talent, you know, Emma Watson. I mean, what's the, how do you do that? Is it, are you seeing oh, a gap uh, that the that studios was have Fernando. Had That was Fernando, Bobaira, and, and okay. Alejandro. They, they, they do have their, their shine. <laughs> they're, they're amazing. So I, I do perceive, you know, I think that we have to protect talent. We have to follow talent. We have to convince them to work with us. And we have to create, I would say, long, term relationships. But we have to create this environment for, for, you know, for creation. But is it easier for a foreign studio, like Telefonica Studio, to get a, a US or UK talent well, nowadays? Let's be, let's be clear about this. You know, studios are making 40 movies a year, while 10 years ago they were making like 20 to 30. Just Warner's. Warner's is the only one that keep making, churning like 40 movies a year. Mm -hmm. So. When they decide to, you know, minimize risk, they're using the same amount of financing to make bigger movies. They're trying to reach foreign, foreign markets. You know, 10 years ago, the US, the US ticket sale were, again, were around 70%, and foreign was 40%. 10 years after that, it's 60% is foreign, and 40% is the US. And that's, the drivers are Latin America, Russia, and China. So what the studios are doing now is they are skipping that middle range movies between 20 to $100 million. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody keeps saying uh, here, and it was very much like uh, here uh, in, in May at the film market, everybody kept saying, you know, the $50 million movie is dead by now because nobody wants to touch that. Studios are investing either in, in tentpoles or tadpoles. Mm -hmm. They are going through superheroes, or they're going to horror movies made under $2 million, like, like the kind of uh, 
the Blumhouse kind of movies. So there is a middle ground that is actually that's that's the place where uh, serialized television is going now. They're trying to grab 35 years old audiences plus audiences. But I mean, there is still uh, room for theatrical releases for that for the same audience for for 35 plus audiences. We can make movies that will look like a 50 million dollar dollar movie for 18, like Regression. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's the best example of it. Yes, and in terms of TV series, do you think that you can also make a difference? Um, yeah, but I think we have to talk, we have to, those series have to be tailor-made. Mm-hmm. We are part of the creative process. We are not buyers. We are, we are not financiers. We also finance, but we are, we, we are taking risk. We are equity partners. We are part of the creative process. That was our main goal, mm-hmm. not to be silent partners. Otherwise, it's like, it doesn't make any sense for us. Yeah. Another niche for you are family movies, right? Yeah. I mean, you've really gone into that. Why? Well, mainly with animation, it's quite easy. I mean, you, an animated movie can travel. Dad the Explorer was a... Dad the Explorer is a good example. It was a huge success Now you uh, have in a sequel. Spain. We are working, uh, we are producing the sequel, and uh, you, you have seen some, uh, you know, some shots from Capture the Flag. Mm-hmm. Both movies are going to be released worldwide by Paramount. And those movies are amazing, the same team. So yeah, movies like that can travel. We can create a global brand out of movies like that. Of course, yeah. Okay, you've been, I'm sure you've heard so much, you know, uh, keynotes about the revolution in um, global film distribution yeah. and you know, the, the role that streaming services are playing now. How is that impacting the way you do your business and the way you distribute it? Well, you know, for me, it's like, I think that the, the, the system is getting back to the 40s. You know, in the 40s, you have kind of a, this kind of a vertical integration mm-hmm. where companies were producing distribution, having, being, having a hand distribution, and uh, on, you know, uh, an exhibition. So it seems that everybody wants to get back to the, the, this old system where a single company, like, like Netflix is a good example of that. They are producing their distribution, they have the distribution, they, they, are exhi- they, have, they have the exhibition means. So it, nowadays, this is part of, of uh, our way of thinking. It's not separated. We are thinking about distribution, every kind of distribution, while, while we are trying to create the products. That's how we can have a director's cut Exclusively, yes. exclusively for, uh, for VOD. And so maybe one, one day you'll be making a movie exclusively to distribute uh, on a, a streaming service. Oh, You'd it be- can happen, but you know, I think we have to protect theatrical. Theatrical still, it's not meaningless. And uh, the, the theatrical attendance, it's on the rise. That's something that, you know, a lot of people, it's kind of fishing, you know. But it's true, it's not, uh, theatrical, it's here. In Latin we, we, America? We, in Latin America, time. it's every, every single year more people is going to theaters. So, what can I say? I told you yesterday, we were talking about this yesterday, and I told you, I think that creativity, as uh, the French poet André Cide said like 40 years ago, you know, creativity comes out of uh, limitations. Mm-hmm. So, we, this obligation that we have became a tool. And that's how uh, we did perceive the, the law obligation. It's a tool. Okay, just one last question. Yeah. Uh, you're already very present, obviously, in Spain and Argentina. Uh, are you looking to tap into any other local uh, film industries, for example? <sighs> well, ye- yes, yes. We are working Germany. in Germany. I would love to go to Germany. The company has some operations there. Uh, since we're looking for tax breaks there and the UK, uh, it's, I think it's a possibility. Also, we are making movies in Mexico and Colombia. That's cool. Great. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Elsa. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.